presentation and I am really happy uh, to, 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 to share my, my perspective on, on a topic that turns out uh, rather timely and as we just uh, discussed when we planned and we fixed the date we didn't even know uh, uh, that uh, uh, an election in Poland, uh, a presidential election, would uh, would take place just uh, uh, just the day before. And uh, what we certainly didn't know uh, was that antisemitism would uh, um, occupy such a central uh, uh, part as a topic, as a as a trope in this in this election campaign, uh, which uh, provides a rather special context uh, to. Uh, to this conversation. I will not even try to exhaust the, 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 the subject uh, of antisemitism in Poland, but um, I will try to, uh, to mention some points, some things, and I very much look forward to, uh, to comments and, 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 and questions and, and the discussion afterwards. But of course, as, um, as we all realize very, very well, um, antisemitism in Poland is not a new phenomenon. Uh, it has a, a a long history and of course uh, the Jewish community in Poland has a long history um, until the middle of the of the 20th century um, uh, Poland was one of the main centers of um, of Jewish culture and Jewish life um, but antisemitism also existed and especially in the interwar period in the 1920s 1930s uh, antisemitism um, uh, was an important uh, political factor in Poland and that was also the time uh, when the stereotype of Jewish communism um, uh, was uh, forged it was uh, was constructed in uh, in, 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 in Polish uh, um, politics and culture um, um, the so-called Zido Komuna uh, that is a phrase that is still very much uh, um, very much alive um, nowadays. Uh, uh, despite the fact that uh, the Jewish community in Poland today is very small, is very tiny. And uh, since the Holocaust, uh, since the waves of uh, emigration in the, in the, in the second uh, half of, uh, of the 20th century, um, and, uh, the Jewish community in Poland became uh, very small. There are, of course, different criteria, different ways to define uh, um, Jewishness, Jewish identity, but whatever criteria you use, we are probably talking about a community of uh, um, uh, about 10,000 people in a country of almost 40 million people. Uh, so it is a very small uh, community indeed. Uh, but of course, in contrast to the small size of the Jewish community, the level uh, of hostility against the Jews is uh, uh, is relatively high. It is out of all proportion to the to the actual size of the of the, of the Jewish community in Poland today. But you know this phrase uh, antisemitism without Jews uh, is is well known for decades already. Um, uh, I think it was uh, coined by uh, Paul Landwey, or at least it was uh, it was made famous by by Paul, Paul Landwey and and the title of. Uh, of his book about um, uh, about Poland and, and other states in uh, in uh, Central and Eastern Europe in the early 70s, um, and we know that uh, antisemitism was, for example, instrumentalized, activated uh, by the by the communist regime in 1968, when the so-called anti-Zionist campaign was uh, was 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 conducted by the. Uh, by the by the uh, communist rulers of um, uh, of Poland, uh, but if we if we jump to the um, to the period after 1989 to the post communist period, um, I think what we what we faced uh, what we witnessed in 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 the 90s was a very strong um, uh, spoken or unspoken assumption on the part of what you might uh, call the, the liberal elites about antisemitism as a so-called marginal phenomenon. Um, a, a marginal phenomenon uh, that exists, but it is mostly a, a matter of the older generation. It is mostly a, an issue um, uh, uh, that, that had to do with the elderly. Uh, so let's say people who had had been socialized in, 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 in the 1930s and they have a certain 
uh, prejudice uh, that goes back to uh, to uh, to that time uh, as a kind of hangover from the pre-war period, and uh, well, sooner or later. Um, um, that generation will disappear and anti-Semitism as a problem will disappear with them uh, or it will shrink, uh, it will decrease. That was a very uh, powerful, a very common uh, um, uh, assumption uh, that, that existed in the 1990s. And uh, um, when, when I uh, um, did my research and the Never Again Association monitored uh, uh, the, the the situation in Poland already in in the in the 1990s uh, uh, we questioned this assumption we, we challenged it because we never uh, 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 accepted uh, this very sim simplistic uh, simplistic approach um, just uh, looking at what uh, what was happening already in the 1990s on the level um, of the uh, of the youth culture. Um, on the level of, um, for example, the, the, the culture of the stadium, uh, uh, football fan culture, soccer culture. Um, if we looked at what was happening um, on the level of the uh, racist uh, uh, music scene, uh, that appeared in Poland in the 1990s. Uh, and of course, uh, later uh, when we looked at what happened online, um, we saw that there were already important, powerful channels of transmission of uh, um, uh, anti-Semitic prejudice and anti-Semitic ideology um, to the young generation, a kind of intergenerational transmission of, uh, of anti-Semitism as a um, as a cultural and, and, and political phenomenon that happened already in the 1990s. And what we are seeing today is, is, um, is uh, in a way, an aftermath uh, of, um, of that, uh, of that uh, transmission. And as a sociologist myself, as a, as a social uh, scientist, I think I have the right to be a little bit um, cynical and skeptical about uh, uh, measuring antisemitism with um, with numbers with figures and of course there are uh, there are people who uh, who try to do it um, uh, but i think we know the limitations of, um, of 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 this kind of statistical approach to antisemitism but whatever um, uh, whatever method you use there is a lot of sociological evidence showing that uh, uh, also, statistically speaking, uh, anti-Semitic attitudes in Poland today are more widespread than they were in the 1990s. So this assumption I mentioned previously was disproved uh, uh, in, a, in, a very, in a very clear way. Um, uh, and I, I think one of the ironies and paradoxes of the democratic uh, transformation of Polish society is, uh, is the fact that it is often the younger people, it is the young generation, uh, who turn out to be um, more xenophobic, in some cases more anti-Semitic, than the generation of their parents or even grandparents. So I think uh, we have to see this important paradox as a as a very important um, uh, aspect of the um, mm, mm, of the of, of the democratic. Uh, uh, transformation of, of Polish uh, uh, society with uh, with all its um, uh, paradoxes. Um, one other thing that um, uh, 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 that happened already in in the 1990s um, is is linked with the Catholic Church, and you know Poland is often referred to as a Catholic country. Uh, um, not without good reasons, of course. Uh, but if you look at Polish history and also Polish society today, you, you, you will see it is a little bit more complicated and uh, uh, Polish identity and Catholicism are, 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 not, uh, are not synonymous. Uh, but of course, uh, the Catholic Church is a very important um, um, social institution in Poland. The majority of Polish people, in one way or another, declared their uh, affiliation with the uh, with the Catholic Church, and uh, still in the 1990s, you could debate uh, which uh, mm, uh, point of view within the Church is more uh, 
um, more representative. And there, there was a plurality of, of views. There, there were some more liberal and progressive views, uh, but there was also a, a, a a wing within the church um, uh, symbolized by the um, uh, radio station uh, uh, um, known as Radio Maria, uh, which appeared in the 1990s. Um, but very, very quickly, it became much more than a radio station. It became a social movement, um, uh, which over the years uh, uh, developed and uh, it also includes a, a, a television, a daily newspaper, a university, and a whole array of um, front uh, organizations. Um, and it is a social movement, which in my opinion is, um, is an important political, political movement too, um, which is uh, very, very influential, but it is also very strongly xenophobic and uh, uh, often anti-Semitic. Uh, and I think uh, if we look at the Catholic Church today in Poland, we see that there is no longer this, uh, we don't really see uh, this plurality of views any, any longer. It seems that this wing of the Catholic Church represented by, by Radio Maria uh, effectively has dominated uh, the, the whole institution. Um, there are ex exceptions, uh, but these are exceptions. I think the, 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 the main, um, um, uh, the mainstream of the Catholic Church today uh, is, um, is very much under the influence of, of, the, of the nationalist uh, uh, radical right movement around, uh, around Radio Maria, which, as I said, is, uh, is frequently anti-Semitic. Uh, so I would say this, this cultural base of um, contemporary radical nationalism and anti-Semitism as a very important part of the, um, of the culture of, um, of radical nationalism in Poland that already uh, um, uh, developed in the 1990s and since, since the 1990s it, it has developed further. And if we now jump again to, um, to the year 2015, which was, uh, which was the year of, uh, of a big political uh, change in Poland, um, the discourse of the electoral campaign, uh, the parliamentary electoral campaign in the summer of 2015, uh, very much focused on the issue of refugees. Um, despite the fact that the, the European refugee crisis did not really affect Poland in any direct way, because very few of those refugees uh, um, uh, went to Poland or intended to, um, uh, to go to Poland, um, but it was framed in a, in a very negative way in, in political discourse and, and in media discourse um, as a threat to Polish identity. And of course, uh, a lot of that discourse uh, was um, um, very strongly uh, Islamophobic. Um, um, and it was for the first time when also the phenomenon of Islamophobia without Muslims uh, uh, became um, a, big, a big issue in, um, in Polish society. And, and um, I remember at that time, um, many commentators said, well, um, now Islamophobia replaced antisemitism as the main form of xenophobic um, discourse in, 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 in Polish society, in, in, in Polish politics. And uh, to be honest, I was always very skeptical about, uh, about this assumption um, because I thought, well, maybe Islamophobia did not replace antisemitism. It supplemented antisemitism as a form of hateful discourse. And antisemitism didn't just disappear. It did not go uh, away as a kind of paradigmatic uh, uh, form, uh, form of, um, of hatred in uh, uh, Central and Eastern Europe. Uh, certainly, um, in the case of Poland, uh, it, is, it is much more deeply rooted. Um, so it did not disappear. And uh, I'm afraid I was proved uh, correct um, uh, three years later. In January 2018, uh, when the Polish parliament passed the legislation uh, on the 
Institute of National Memory, the, the so-called history law, that radically uh, restricted um, uh, free speech on, uh, um, on the issue of Polish uh, complicity uh, in, uh, in Nazi crimes. And of course, it's, 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 it's a complex discussion that, that you know, goes back to, uh, to the book uh, by, by Jan Gross, The Neighbors, and the discussion that, uh, that, that followed it. Uh, I believe at that time, Poland made a lot of progress in terms of dealing with, uh, with the past, uh, including the, um, and the history of antisemitism in Poland. But uh, it also seems that uh, uh, that progress was largely uh, rolled back uh, also through uh, through this law, but what was maybe even more problematic than than the law itself was the kind of political uh, discourse that went with it, uh, and we we saw a, a big wave of anti-Semitic uh, um, um, statements and stereotypes appearing. Uh, uh, in the media and uh, um, made by uh, by political figures in Poland in the um, in the first uh, months of uh, 2018 ironically 50 years after the infamous anti-semitic campaign of the of the communist regime um, this law was partly um, uh, changed uh, in June 2018 uh, under pressure from both Israel and especially the United States and uh, the, the ruling party in Poland uh, changed the law partly because it is still there, but instead of criminal provisions, uh, it, um, um, it mentions the possibility of a financial fine. And uh, I remember the, the prime minister, when he introduced this change in, in, the, in the parliament, he said that a publisher who um, who, who publishes incorrect views on, on Polish history would be um, uh, liable to, to a fine of uh, uh, 100 million dollars. And uh, to be honest with you, if I had a choice, go to jail uh, or pay 100 million dollars, I would probably go to jail because I don't have the money. So to me, that doesn't really make uh, a very big difference. Um, uh, but uh, okay, since then uh, things uh, things um, um, uh, things have changed uh, because what I think this this uh, this this uh, this case um, um, resulted in is that it opened it opened the space the discursive space uh, for anti semites to organize politically around the um, the anti semitic tropes. And uh, the social norm, uh, the, the, the social norm of political discourse, of political culture uh, shifted uh, in the year 2018. And this new space uh, was, uh, was very quickly exploited by a new political group uh, uh, that, that was created um, uh, soon after, which is known as Confederacja, Confederation, uh, which is a new far right bloc um, uh, which uh, um, which is organized uh, uh, largely or mostly around the, the, the opposition to so-called Jewish claims, uh, uh, which means um, um, the idea of restitution of property uh, that belonged to the um, 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 to the Jewish victims of the Holocaust. And uh, uh, in May 2019, last year, um, they organized. Um, um, a, a demonstration of about 10,000 people in opposition uh, uh, to those so-called Jewish claims in front of the U.S. Embassy in Warsaw, um, which I believe must have been uh, one of the biggest, if not the biggest, uh, anti-Semitic street demonstration uh, in, in Europe in, uh, in recent history. And, um, you know, slogans such as Poland must not become the second Palestine. That, that is a rather typical slogan from, from the demonstration. And if I could mention just uh, quickly, uh, in, in, in many of the uh, academic discussions about new antisemitism, uh, uh, um, many, uh, many people, including my, myself, uh, often said that, well, it does not really concern Poland because uh, Israel was never a big part of anti-Semitic discourse uh, in, uh, in, in, in the case of Poland. It was uh, more, uh, uh, more of a case of 
so-called traditional antisemitism, uh, uh, but not really uh, um, focusing on, on the Middle East. That has changed a little bit in, in the last years. And I think um, um, anti, the hostility against Israel is much more prominent in, 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 the, last, uh, in, in the last two years uh, in, uh, in, in terms of uh, um, anti-Semitic propaganda in Poland, which uh, goes back directly to, to the Israeli opposition to the history law uh, uh, that, was, uh, that was introduced in, in January 2018. And now, again, one more jump to this year. And uh, uh, the, the pandemic that uh, affects us all in whatever country we are, we are now, uh, of course, it, uh, it, it, it affected Poland in, in some ways, um, not as tragic or, or not as dramatic in, in, in many other countries. Uh, but one of the outcomes of, um, of, of, of the pandemic uh, and of the lockdown um, has been a proliferation of um, conspiracy theories. And again, I think that that activated certain um, 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 deeply rooted stereotypes uh, about Jews and a lot of those uh, anti uh, conspiracy theories uh, on COVID-19, uh, they, are, they are very, very strongly related to, uh, to anti-Semitic stereotypes. And I would encourage everybody who is interested to uh, uh, to to uh, to look at uh, our report published by the Never Again Association under the title "The Virus of um, of Hate," uh, which uh, um, uh, uh, which includes a, a big list of um, anti-Semitic uh, um, um, uh, conspiracy theories directly related to the to the pandemic. But finally, last point, and this is what I what I alluded to in the very beginning, is the presidential election that was delayed because of uh, because of the pandemic, and uh, the second round, as as you know, uh, it just happened uh, yesterday. And this uh, uh, this election and this campaign was very uh, very special um, for a number of reasons, uh, but uh, the main reason is that it focused so much on um, anti-minority uh, discourse and the vilification uh, of uh, of minorities in this case, especially the LGBT uh, community and uh, the humanization of, uh, uh, of, of this particular minority group that went beyond um, anything that we, that we have seen uh, so far in, in, in my view. And it, you know, to the point when a, a big part of the campaign uh, actually focused on discussing whether or not LGBT are people or they are not people. And this phrase LGBT are not people that became uh, um, a, a catchphrase of, of this campaign. It was repeated by, uh, by, by politicians, including the president of Poland, who actually said it at an election rally. Uh, he said, LGBT are not people, they are a, an ideology, or it is an ideology. But the phrase, they are not people, uh, uh, it was shocking. Uh, whatever, whatever your political uh, views, uh, I think when we talk about the humanization, that, that would be, that, that would be, uh, that would be uh, a very striking example of, uh, of that. And again, as it happened previously, uh, when one minority group is, is vilified, uh, we did not have to wait too long for the Jews to, to be vilified uh, as well. And especially in the last days of, of the campaign, uh, the the propaganda machine that that is very much uh, 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 in the hands of the of the ruling party, the state media, uh, radio, and especially state television, it also focused on on the Jewish threat and the threat of the of the of the of the so-called Jewish claims, uh, and which was exploited to the maximum uh, by the. Uh, by the by the propaganda of of, of the ruling party and um, i i'm not sure if i have time to but i think it's important to 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 mention this this also it is an anecdote but it is also a, 
um, an example of of the of of, of the kind of um, uh, discourse uh, that um, that was uh, um, that was typical of, of this propaganda just several weeks ago um, uh, um, they used an old quote from an old uh, interview uh, given by the by the opposition candidate uh, uh, Rafał Trzaskowski um, who is a Catholic like the majority of um, of Poles um, uh, but he said uh, I believe in the God of Spinoza and this one sentence was used and exploited in a massive way by the by by the by the right wing propaganda and by the state uh, media, the state television, that first of all stressed that Spinoza was a Jew, and secondly that the philosophy of Spinoza um, uh, is not compatible with the teaching of the Catholic Church, and they repeated it over and over again. And I think uh, uh, many of you might be surprised that you know the uh, Jewish philosopher of, of the 17th century became an important part Hello. Yes, it should work now, Rafael. I am. So, I am so. I am so sorry, but uh, don't, don't worry. Now, now it's working. Can you hear me now? Yes. Um, so I was. I was talking about Spinoza as a, as a, as a target of um, anti-Semitic comments on on the state media. But but uh, mm, I I I would say in short that until now. Um, the leaders of the ruling party, uh, by and large, they did not engage in anti-Semitic rhetoric themselves. And that also changed in, the, in, in, in those last days of the, of the presidential campaign. And both the president, uh, Andrzej Duda, and the leader of the ruling party, who, as we know, is the de facto leader of, uh, of Poland, Jarosław Kaczyński, they directly um, talked about this issue of the, of, you know, of the so-called Jewish claims as a threat to Poland during the electoral campaign, at the peak of the, of the electoral campaign. And I think in a way that really changes uh, that really changes a lot. It changes the context because now we have seen uh, such discourse coming directly from the uh, from the leaders of the of the ruling party and the leaders of the country, and I think what is um, what is interesting and important to see is the reactions um, outside of Poland or the lack of reactions. Um, I think so far there is silence from the European Union. Uh, the OSC, Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, uh, issued a statement uh, condemning uh, uh, also the anti-Semitic language of, on, on state media during, during the campaign. Um, but I would say, uh, by and large, those, those reactions are, are not there. And uh, I think uh, what is really striking is that in the heart of Europe, at the beginning of the of the of the third decade of the twenty first century, uh, there has been an electoral campaign that focused so much on uh, on targeting minorities, including the Jews. And uh, I think, you know, that is uh, that is very problematic and um, and alarming. And I think the repercussions. Of, of those last days and, and weeks of the electoral campaign, uh, they will be with us for, uh, for a very long time. But I think half an hour is, uh, uh, is past now. Um, uh, so I think I, I, will, I will stop. Thank you again for, uh, um, uh, uh, for listening. And I, I will be very interested to hear your, um, your comments and maybe some questions.